Hey guys, Tom Cherry Holmes here with an interesting find of Atari history. As time goes on, it's getting harder and harder to find more interesting Atari treasures, but every now and then we find something that's uh, rather interesting, and it'll be interesting to see if we can find out more information on this particular piece of software. In this case, this particular piece of software is called Amoeba, and while it has an Atari copyright, it was found in a batch of uh, Atari Program Exchange discs. So it may very well have been, like other APX titles, it was something that was developed at Atari but was not decided to re be released as an Atari product for one reason or another, and may not have been released as an APX product for one reason or another because the author didn't consider it finished. But even in this state, this particular tool is rather interesting because this tool, Amoeba, again, is a programmer's development tool of sorts. It combines a uh, an assembler, a disassembler, and a debugging tool along with uh, sophisticated features for the time such as uh, breakpoints and patch points so that you can inject bits and pieces of code to jump to other places temporarily, turn them on, turn them off, etc. It's intended to be loaded into memory at a particular memory location and when needed, called upon. So in this case, we'll actually demonstrate it by going through a, a particular workflow here of a particular piece of software that just cycles through some colors. I have here the Atari Assembler Editor and we're going to go ahead and enter our program into memory. What, you guys think I was actually gonna type it all out? Pfft, no, don't waste our time. And here we have our program here. As you can see, it's fairly simple, 6502 base loop. It has a couple of problems with it, which we'll soon see. Uh, but we'll actually go ahead and assemble this as it is. Actually, we'll make one change to it. Just to really, just to really get the point across. Oops. My bad. We go ahead, assemble the program, and we can see everything's good. Let's go ahead, go to DOS. We'll go ahead and save our program that's already assembled in memory. And since I'm being very quick about this, I'm just gonna save one entire page of memory even though it's only a few bytes. There's no initialization address needed, so it simply starts at 0600. And we save the result, and when we look, there's our program ready to go. We go ahead and load it. Well, gosh, that doesn't look right, does it? It's supposed to cycle colors. Well, let's see what could be wrong. Uh, for this, we'll go ahead and hit our reset button. Now, because I assembled this into page 6, it's relatively untouched and tends to survive uh, reboots, I mean, uh, warm starts and the like. So, yeah, anyway. We'll go ahead and look at our... Let's go ahead and just look at the directory of drive 2. Now we see some interesting things here, particularly uh, that uh, we have a custom VTOC uh, with a label of Amoeba Prototype 21. Very interesting, uh, probably version 21 of a program that was intended to go on, but it never happened for one reason or another. Let's go ahead and load it. Here we have the sign-on screen for Amoeba version 3.0. And where do we want to locate Amoeba in memory? Now this is rather important because uh, you're having, you need, a, you need space to be able to put your program, which at Atari typically you're developing cartridges or something that might take up 8K or 16K of memory. But you also need enough memory to keep the uh, Amoeba in memory as well. And judging by the size of the program loader that's there, that's approximately 9 to 10K that you need to store Amoeba in memory. 
So since this isn't a, that big of a program, we'll go ahead and store it up in page 40 here, or address 4000 in memory. Once we actually have it here, we have the uh, status display along with the Amoeba sign up on top. We have the content area in the middle of the screen, and we also have a command area below, which will indicate the current command that we're engaged in. So let's see if our program's in memory. For that, we'll use the display command. And since we assembled it at 0600, it's there. And since it's approximately 10, 12 bytes or so, we'll say uh, 060B and M or H. Now, this is a uh, particular in particularly interesting nomenclature here. M in this case stands for mnemonic, and that means 6502 instruction mnemonic, LDA, STA, etc. So what you're going to get is a disassembler view, uh, as long as well as the uh, operands that are needed. If we were to put H here, we would get a hexadecimal display. Since it's a program, we want a mnemonic display. And hey, there's our program here in memory. And I see a couple. I see a couple of things that we might want to change here. One of them uh, is that uh, most definitely that we're storing the wrong register value into memory. Let's change that. For that, we need modify. And we'll go ahead and execute the instruction that we want to know we want to change, which is 0602. And you can either change hex values or you can change mnemonic values, which means it will assemble your bytes directly into memory. In this case, STX 02C6. Now, it will continue on, and I can continue in assembling instructions here as things, you know, just until the sun sets. But uh, if I hit enter, it will keep the instruction that was already there and come back down into command mode. Now, if I go ahead and display the results, we'll see our modified program here in memory, ready to go, everything's great. Now, we can go ahead and trace the execution of this program to see if it's going to work. For that, we use the trace command. Enter our start instruction as before. And if we use a value of zero for repeat, it will just continue on indefinitely. How, uh, otherwise, we basically uh, have an iterate. To, yeah, basically, have a number of times to iterate here. Now we'll go ahead and hit enter. Uh, control one does what it's supposed to here. It stops. Uh, stops the input. So you can see, as we're as we're going up and down through the instructions, we will see, of course, that. Uh, the uh, uh, that the X register is decrementing as it should, and the processor registers are updating to reflect all of the change values, etc., etc. But what we aren't seeing here is the screen actually changing, and that's because Amoeba is actually overriding the display with a display list interrupt. However, if we go ahead and hit uh, break we stop and we use the uh, option key. We'll see that indeed our, our uh, colors are indeed changing. So we continue. And we can see that our colors are indeed changing like they're supposed to. Cool, huh? Now, of course, in addition to this, we can also explicitly uh, go to a location in memory, which in this case, our assembled program, and indicate that no, it's not a subroutine, treat it as, a, as an executed program, or this is a subroutine so that when we RTS, we come back into the debugger. And we see our color cycling happening as it's supposed to. Now, if we go ahead and hit pause, or sorry, break in my case, it's the pause key on my emulated keyboard. 
uh, then Amoeba comes back home and we're back in the debugger as if nothing happened here. Now, we can also do a lot of other interesting things as well, such as uh, assign a breakpoint. Now, let's go ahead and just for the sake of argument here, let's assign a breakpoint just before we decrement our register instruction because we want to see if that decrement actually does what it's supposed to do. So for that, we go ahead and set a breakpoint B, S to set the breakpoint, set breakpoint zero, and that will be set now at location 0605. Uh, and we want it to definitely stop there, bang. So. B0 is now 0605, and if we actually run a trace now, or do a go, or do a trace, that sort of thing, we will find that we stopped on our breakpointed instruction, so we can test it, trace, do a trace, and now we can go, okay, that's happened, we are now to the next piece, to the next, to the next one, to the next one, to the next one, etc. To get rid of that breakpoint, we simply just clear the breakpoint, zero, zero, and zero everything out. Uh, other interesting bits. Now, the patch, the patch uh, functionality. I'd like to work with a handful of uh, Atari hackers here to see what all is possible here. But this looks like uh, the ability to set uh, the BRK instruction to execute arbitrary bits of uh, code, and to turn those bits of code on and off, to activate debugging functionality or something else to that effect. I'm not quite sure. Maybe it's that's not it entirely, but it's something we're definitely going to have to look at. If I go ahead and set a particular patch point here, it goes to uh, a particular address in memory here. P0 goes to 4178 in memory, etc. I want to see what these actually are. So I'll go ahead and clear that. Okay, whatever. I'm guessing that's where, uh, that's, that's the uh, debugger in entry point. If we go ahead and uh, hit option, we see some more auxiliary uh, functions that Amoeba can do, such as a register list. So we can say, uh, this is so you can modify any register in memory. And this is very helpful, especially if you want to do a stack dump, you can set the stack pointer here and look at different sections of stack. Uh, so in this case, let's go ahead uh, program count and set the program counter. Yeah, yeah okay, 0605. But you can also set uh, your processor status registers here directly. And behind the scenes, it will do necessary instructions to make that happen. It's rather clever in this case, but you could, if you wanted to, zero out all of your processor status registers. So, in rather interesting there. Uh, anyway, do a sta stack dump, and there is there's the last few bits of our uh, there's a, the last few bits of our call stack. Cool, huh? So there you go. Of course, also in addition to all of this, you can set hard copy to on and off, which basically means anything that shows up in the content area goes off to your printer and. Uh, load so you can so you can load your uh, you can load any binary loadable file into memory it has to be Atari DOS you know binary load format so that real that's it man that's 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 amoeba in a nutshell uh, if you want to for some reason exit amoeba you can, of course, bounce back to Amoeba at any point by its run address. And you pick right back up where you left off. 
So with that, that's pretty much a good run through the program here, and I hope you guys really have enjoyed it. I love finding things like this, and I know Kevin does too, and I hope to find a lot more stuff like this in the future. Uh, I'd like to work with a hand, work with more people to see what the patch functionality could do, because I have a funny feeling 